That's a drum roll. It is time for the Storytelling Festival. <laughs> We've been waiting for this moment. Our first presenter is a lady of very special talents. Her name is Lona Bartlett, and she enjoys education. She has a degree in education, and with that, she creates stories to make American history more interesting than it already is. She creates puppets, she makes scripts, and she brings to life stories from tradition and family stories. Let's welcome to the stage Lona Bartlett. should begin with Once upon a time. There was a young woman by the name of Bridget. She <laughs> sat in her rocking chair and she had her baby in her arms. She walked back and forth as she watched her husband gather his final items to put in his pack. A loaf of bread, a piece of cheese, a very large container of water. He tucked all those things in and he walked over to his wife and he kissed her on the forehead. He bent over and he kissed his baby on the forehead too. Will you be okay while I'm gone? Of course I will. You take this trip twice a year to the marketplace. I will be fine. Oh, but this year you, you have the baby. He will keep me company. I will be fine. Well, he picked up his bag and Bridget walked him to the door. I will bring you some new yard goods so you can make yourself a new dress. And I'll bring some things for the baby back too. There was one more hug and of course a kiss. And he was on his way. He walked down the road, up the hill, and out of sight. <clears throat> he had told her earlier <coughs> that he would be gone for four days, a week at the most, and, and that was usual for this trip. And she was excited about getting those yard goods because, you know, her outfits were not fitting the way that they should. They were kind of ill-fitting since the birth of the baby. Well, the four days passed and he did not come back. She watched for him and then seven days passed and she began to get a little concerned. Eight days, eight days turned into two weeks. Now she was worried. Two weeks turned into a month, a month turned into three months, four months, six months and her husband had not come back. Oh, she heard the whispers about town. Oh, I heard that he was eaten by wolves. Oh, no, 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 no. I heard he found someone that he might like just a little bit better. She didn't pay attention to him. She knew her husband, and she waited for him. Well, she had started selling off her livestock. I mean, after all, she had to have some money for her and her baby. And not only some of the livestock, but she started selling precious items from her home. A pair of candlesticks, a pin from her mother. After all, she told herself, they're only things. There was one animal, though. Oh, she held on to and it was a pig. That pig was, um, I, uh, pregnant. <laughs> oh, 
she was feeling the most joy that she had felt since her husband went missing. Those piglets were going to be her, her livelihood. They were her future. They were her income. They were her bacon. <laughs> she was excited. Finally, the day came. There was squealing that came from the barn. She picked up her baby. She went out there and waited for those piglets to be born. It was going to be a good litter. She knew that it was going to be great. And she sat there and she waited. And the squealing went on and on and on. And then the baby got tired and the baby started squealing and the pig was squealing and it was squealing in stereo. She couldn't take it any longer. She was getting worried about the pig now because the babies, the piglets had not come. She carried her baby back into the house and she rocked him and put him down in his crib. And then she went back out to the barn to trying to help the pig that sow to have her piglets. She pushed on the pig's stomach, and she didn't like that at all. And she back, sat back wondering what she was going to do. And the pig squealed and squealed and squealed until it did not squeal anymore. Hmm. And the silence was loud. Bridget got up and she went back to her house and sat on her porch. She put her elbows on her knees and she put her head in her hands. She was too overwhelmed to cry. She got up and got a drink of water from the bucket that sat on the porch. She took a swig and set the cup down and went back to holding her head in her hands. When she sat up, she saw a woman, an old woman, walking down the road. And that old woman was hunched over and, and small. She was wearing a lovely green velvet gown. And she wore a matching green velvet hat on her head that had a swooping feather on the side. And she carried a staff that was much too large for so small a woman. But yet she used it to walk along. The woman approached Bridget and spoke. My dear, could I bother you? For a drink of that water, please, I am quite parched in my throat. Well, Bridget told the woman certainly, and she went in and got a clean cup and dipped a cup of water for the woman and invited her to sit down on her porch on the front step with her. The woman took a long, long drink from that water. And she looked over at Bridget. Oh, my dear, you appear as though you have been lamenting. Uh, might I help you? Perhaps I could lend you a listening ear. Well, Bridget, was at her wit's end. And she saw no harm in sharing with her and telling her about her husband and how he had gone missing and she's waiting for him to come home and now the pigs, the sow, those piglets would not come. Oh, well, perhaps I could help you with that. Would you mind taking me to see your pig. Oh, no, well, certainly. And Bridget led the old woman into the barn and they both knelt down beside that sow. 
The old woman took her arms and reached around the pig. Oh, this is a fine litter, a large one. She patted the pig and turned to Bridget. I believe I could help you. I, I would be glad to. Um, you could. Oh, whatever could you do? Oh, oh, don't hurry me along. Um, if I could help you, would you give to me compensation? Um, yes, of course, of course I would. Uh, if it would be in my possession to give, I would give to you. Very well. Um, do you promise? Of course, I promise. And the deal was struck. I need for you to get for me some things. The old woman told Bridget that she needed a bucket of clean, pure water. She needed a root from the flower, the white one that grew on the mountainside. She needed a sharp stone of granite. And she needed a clean, white cloth. Bridget went and gathered all those things in haste, and she brought them back to the old woman. The old woman took the cloth, dipped it in the bucket, and began to wash off the root. And it crackled as she did. <laughs> she picked up the stone of granite, and she began to scrape at the flesh of that root. She put it in the bucket, and she stirred it around. She had a pouch that was on the side of her waist, and in that pouch she pulled out some herbs and some leaves, and she crushed them in the bucket, and then she stirred it again. She picked up her hand, and she let some of that water dribble down into the mouth of the pig. started making noise again. Oh, it was as if it was music to Bridget's ears. She was so excited. And then the pigs came. The first one, the second, the fifth, the eighth, the tenth, the twelfth, fourteen, sixteen piglets. It was the largest litter that Bridget had ever seen. Oh, thank you. Thank you ever so much. I... Oh, this is just wonderful. I, I, I don't know what to say. Oh, but you do remember that you promised me compensation. Oh, of course. Um, please, uh, the only thing I have of value are my piglets. Take your pick. Whichever one you wish you may have. Oh, no, 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 my dear. I, I want something small, but I would not take your piglets. I, I do know how important they are to you. Um, well, I, I don't know what else I have that's of value. Oh, you do have something that I would want. Bridget sat back. She couldn't think of anything. Um, uh, it's small. And it's soft, and it's sleeping in your cabin right now. <coughs> my baby? How do you know of my baby? I did not tell you about my child. Oh, I have my ways. I do know some things. Oh, no, 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 you can't have my baby. You made a promise to me. But not my baby. You did not remove him from the contract. I remove him now. You cannot. It was at that point that Bridget realized who she had made a promise to. You are one of the dark fairies. <laughs> I am. And Bridget had nothing to do except surrender. 
because going against a dark fairy would mean that she would lose not only her son, but her piglets, her sow, her farm, and her life. Oh, but my dear, I, I see that you are distressed. You seem much more distressed now than when I came to help you. You know, I am, I am a person. I am one of compassion. And I, uh, I like to play a game now and then. We will play a game. A game? Well, what sort of game? Oh, it is easy. I will give you three days. And in those three days, I will return when the sun is high. When I come back, I will give you three opportunities to guess my name. And if you are able to guess my name, I will return to you the child. And Bridget, in fact, I will not collect him until I return. Bridget, of course, surrendered. She accepted. She nodded. She said yes. There was nothing else to do. At least she would have three more days with her baby. The first day, Bridget held her baby in her arms and did not put him down. She walked around and she thought of every name that she could absolutely think of, anything she had ever heard, and nothing came to her. The second day, she walked around her house and, and she, her, her mind was vacant and she thought, if only I had an iPhone 10, I would be able to <laughs> Google it and I would know what her name was. But since fairy tale cell phone service had not yet been invented, she was left to her own imagination. On the third day, she needed to escape for just a little while. She rocked her baby, put him down in his crib, and she went walking through the forest. She was at a loss. What was she going to do? But then she heard a voice. Singing? There was chanting? And she headed towards the voice. And she stayed behind the bushes, not knowing who it was. But as she got closer, she heard, <laughs> and in a clearing, she could see that there was a small body of water. And along the bank of that small body of water, there was a long, beautiful, green velvet gown. And beside of that was a beautiful green velvet hat with a large feather. And in the water, there was that fairy in her natural form, dancing and chanting about and singing, woman gasped. She put her hand over her mouth for, for, for fear that she would make too much noise and reveal herself from behind the bushes. She backed away slowly and tiptoed out of the woods. She got back to her cabin and she picked up her baby and she danced with him about her home, saying whoopity story, whoopity story. Her name, her name is whoopity story. And it was nearly time for the sun to be high in the sky. She took her rocking chair and she put it out on her front porch and she sat down in it. And she thought, oh, I do like a good game myself. 
She rocked her baby in that chair, and she watched as the woman came down the road walking with that long staff. The woman got close. Oh, my dear, I'm back to claim the child. Give him here. Give him to me. Oh, oh, Bridget had taken on this look of seriousness. And she held her baby close to her as if she would never see him again. No, no, you've given me three chances. I have three guesses. I could try for my baby for three times. Oh, very well. Go ahead. You will not guess my name, but go ahead. Um, okay. I, I thought for a long time. I mean, I was walking around your cabin. I don't want to hear that. What do you think my name is? Um, your name, your name, your name is Mary. I know Mary is a strong, noble name, and your name must be Mary. That is not my name. I would not have so common a name as Mary. Oh, oh dear. Give me the baby. Just give him to me. You will not guess my name. Oh, no, 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 no. I have two guesses, two more guesses. Um, okay, uh, um... How about, uh, uh, Rabban, 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 Rumpa, Pum? No, um, um, Rumpel, oh, Rumpel Stilskin? No, he's a hideous little man and such an amateur. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh dear, um, give me that child. Uh, um, no, I have one more guess. I have one more guess. And Bridget sat in her chair for a moment. And then she rose, her back straight. She walked towards the fairy and pointed at her and said, I know your name. Oh, poof. No, you don't. Your name. Your name is Whoopity Story. in the water, in the woods, you told me your name. And with that whoopity story twisted and screeched and poof, she was gone in a cloud of dust. And the spell was broken. And we know this because <laughs> on the road before the young woman stood her husband. Mm -hmm. And we want that to happen because after all, fairy tales should always end with, and they live happily ever after. <laughs> that is my take on the Scottish fairy tale of whoopity story. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It says I got. I got. I got a couple more minutes left. Um, yes. Okay. So I grew up with um, my father having been born in 1909. My mother was born in 1922. There were 13 years between my parents. It was really important, especially for my dad, that we would know our heritage, that we would know. Um, who came before us? Because after all, we are all just a, uh, a mixture of those who came before us. So I always knew I was English, Irish, German, Dutch, Scottish. And when I became an adult, my mother said, you're part Native American too. 
You're part Cherokee. Well, go figure. Huh. Now, my Scottish line is held at the, in the Guinness Book of World Records for retention in genealogy. I have a birth order number, so I know exactly from whom I descended in my Scottish line. Story has always been very, very important to my family. As were all of those little songs, those little ditties, all those little things that we sang as children. And here is a song for you. Uh -huh. I called my sister not very long ago and I said, Kay, do you remember this song? She goes, oh, Lona, <laughs> I have not sung that in years. And so we created a memory and on the phone together we sang this tune. Uh, Cannibal King with a big nose ring fell in love with a dusty maid. And every night, the pale moonlight crossed the lake he came. Oh, he hugged and he kissed that pretty little miss in the shade of the bamboo tree. Every night, the pale moonlight sounded like this to me. Baruch, 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 Diddy Adi, Ay, Ay, Baruch, 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 Diddy Adi, Ay. I'll build a buckle up big enough for two, big enough for two, my honey, big enough for two. When we are married, happy we'll be under the bamboo, under the bamboo tree. Baroom, 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 baroom. If you'll be M I N E mine, L B T H I N E fine, and I will be love you all the T I M E time. You are the B S T best of all the R E S T rest, and I will be love you all the T I M E time. Breakable, stackable, any old time. Bump, diddy, yada, bump, bump. Thank you. And if I could say that you are absolutely the B S T best of all the R E S T rest. Thank you. You are a wonderful audience.